I think I know why I was designated as the last speaker. Because I have had a different journey, quite different from the rest. It's an unprecedented one. Now, I don't have a presentation, but I have a prepared speech focusing or dwelling mainly or mostly on my personal insights as on my previous status as a political prisoner or a prisoner of conscience. First, to the organizers of this prestigious event, my esteemed fellow honorees, friends, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Good afternoon. So I'm here, I'm back, I'm free. And it feels surreal to stand before you today and share this profound moment of freedom with each one of you. The past two months since my release has been spent trying to familiarize with once familiar things, like using a cell phone and a laptop. I got my driver's license renewed and I've been unstoppable ever since much to the dismay of my staff. I watched Gumburza, also my first time in a theater after almost seven years. Beautiful movie, very relevant. I went home to Iriga City, my hometown, where I spent my happiest but very emotional holidays ever. I also got to wear a formal gown and a decent makeup for the first time in seven years for a diamond birthday party that I attended. Ang dami ko na mga naging experience the past two months. I have a lot of catching up to do, making up for the seven years that I have missed. It is a bittersweet thought, a constant reminder of the battles that are still to be fought. So thank you so much for this honor to be part of this prestigious event of celebrating women and their achievements. I was given 20 minutes actually, but I won't, I won't exhaust that and just promise me that you won't feel depressed at the end. Amount of times, a way generous amount of time of me just talking, coming from years, of one-hour conversations with visitors and handwritten messages to the outside world. It was all I could do, handwrite my messages. I did not have access to the computer, no internet access. I can talk about how a five by eight square meter of a room with a single bed, a ceiling fan, a bookshelf, and a small desk for writing and reading, and some minimal amenities pretty much became my whole world for almost seven years. No cell phone, no TV, no shower, no air con. I can also talk about my daily routine in detention from 4 p.m from 4 a.m. or 4.30 a.m. up to 11 p.m. I would always make myself busy. I didn't have any idle moments there. I wanted to drive off any feeling of depression or negativism. I can also talk, I can tell you about the dozen stray cats that I have adopted there. Five of them I was able to bring home with me at home although one of them escaped. Perhaps she returned. Her name is Duchess. She returned to Kam Krame. <laughs> or how I became a plantita during the pandemic when the strictly no visitors policy was implemented for several months. I can tell you how the early days of my detention were marked with disbelief and indignation 
or those restless nights thinking about my children and my grandchildren, my ailing mother who, in her semi-dementia state, clung to the belief that her eldest daughter was abroad for further studies. She never knew, up to now, that I was locked up in jail. Sabi kasi ng mga kapatid ko, wag na lang, kasi it might aggravate her health condition. I can even recount to you my harrowing ordeal when I was taken hostage right inside my detention cell, and when the hostage taker said, by 7.30, mom, so minamam pa niya ako, I'm going to kill you too. I thought that was my end. But today, I'm not here to celebrate my own freedom. I am here to celebrate yours, nay, ours, to stand shoulder to shoulder with every woman whose voice is still tifled, whose spirit is still caged, and uh, my freedom, and those of every woman who found the strength to break the chains of victory we have forced together, brick by brick, through acts of bravery and courage, both grand and quiet. I stand before you today only perhaps as a testament to the indomitable spirit that courses through the veins of every woman who has dared to dream of a world free from discrimination and oppression. And I am here to testify, again, please don't get depressed, to the many forms that such oppression can take. For me, it started with words. Words that in the mind of the person who uttered them were meant to destroy me. Words that spread. Words that blurred the lines, or the line between truth and lies. Words that, at a time I feared, will forever be attached to my name, to my family's name, to the legacy of my father, which I endeavored to protect and build on through the hard work and integrity I brought to my job, both in the private practice and in public service. Then it escalated very quickly to the invasion of my personhood and privacy with details of my mobile number and my home address being made public. I had hundreds of bashers getting from them even unprintable words and labels. That was so painful. And the words more and more became palpable threats to my security with a fellow senator casually commenting that I was the most wiretapped person in the country. And that just goes to show how easy it is to shatter a person's or a woman's peace of mind to the point where I really had to wonder, how can a person win when the whole machinery of government were being used for the singular purpose of destroying me? The sins of institutional betrayal grew strong with the institution I once led, trusted, and was proud of was being used to overturn my entire life. I sensed colleagues and other public figures distance themselves from me, while others took advantage, seeing the opportunity that being instrumental in breaking me could bring to their own political ambitions. I saw myself stripped of my chairmanship of the Senate Committee on Justice and Human Rights. I saw myself sidelined and outrightly impeded in the performance of my duties, while there was active whitewashing of the investigation into the killings. My answer was a dissenting report, which remains an accomplishment I am proud of, for though they prevented witnesses and victims from testifying in, those, in that Senate inquiry, we did our part 
in documenting and preserving their sworn statements. That is the core of my story. But mine is not a story of one man versus a woman, or one woman, or even of a whole state machinery against one woman. At its root and essence, it is the story of a small group of powerful people who used their positions in government to betray their own people, or tried to. Mine is not the story of my triumph over adversities. As a woman in this story, I have no shame in admitting that I am not the main character. I never was. I was and I'm just an instrument, an instrument of truth and justice. And that was the thought going through my mind as I spent my last night, or my last, yes, my last night of freedom in February 2017, talking to friends, colleagues, and my staff in the Senate, I was bidding goodbye to them, waiting for the morning to come so I could surrender myself to the authorities. And the rest, as they say, is history. Seven years that went by slowly. They waited for me to waste away. They thought imprisonment and solitude will break me. But they failed to take people like the women here, you, into consideration. I was never truly unfree. I was never truly alone. As I faced the passing milestones of time I could have spent with my family, of opportunities that I could have had to be of more concrete assistance to the victims. And even as I had to face a very real possibility of death at the hands of a hostage taker, one thing kept me going, knowing that none of my suffering was ever in vain and was all for a very worthy cause. I stood on the right side of history with my fellow defenders of human rights, democracy, and the rule of law. Within the confines of my detention cell in Camp Krame, I discovered a power that no walls could ever suppress, the power that resides within the hearts of women who refuse to be silenced. I was raised to fight for my dreams, knowing that as a woman in this macho world, it will be very challenging to be recognized for my own merits. Little did I know that in those long years of injustice, it would be the courage of ordinary women that would inspire me to believe that vindication was near. Today, in the company of remarkable women, allow me to pay homage to those who, in their everyday act of courage, fueled my belief that justice would prevail. If there is one thing that I can be thankful for about my detention, it is that I had the opportunity to learn life's greatest lessons. May lamang ako sa inyo. Marami ako naranasan na hindi nyo siguro mararanasan in your own lifetime. It is that I had the opportunity to learn life's greatest lessons from women whose courage and determination were molded in the collective struggle of ordinary people. I will always carry the story of the mother who lost her child to the drug war, telling me how she felt the hands of her only son slowly grew cold as he lay on the blooded pavement. She said she knew her son wasn't going to make it, but that she wanted to soothe his son's pain, like she always did when he was little and when he was ill. There, in the receiving area of the detention center, she told me, we will fight, San Lila. We will fight. Indeed, what a gift it is 
to be able to fight for yourself without surrendering the commitment to fight for others. Hers may not be a voice that may echo in lecture halls, in courts of law, or grand auditoriums, yet it resounds in the hearts of countless mothers who share her pain. It is a voice that refuses to be silenced, a testament to the enduring spirit of women who bear the weight of injustice with unmatched courage. It is the voice of a young girl who dared to speak her truth, the mother who defied traditions to educate her children, the grandmother who whispered tales of resilience through generations. My unjust detention taught me that our journey as women is not a personal one. It is a journey of solidarity with countless women who have faced adversity and triumphed. It is in the shared experience that our collective strength grows, and I believe the foundation of a more just and equal world is laid. May we continue to find inspiration not only from ordinary women who in their extraordinary bravery have become the unsung heroes of our collective struggle, but also in the stories of women who came before us, those who defied societal norms, who shattered glass ceilings and paved the way for the empowerment we now embrace. Our strength as women lies not in our ability to endure, but in our capacity to uplift one another. Thank you for being a source of inspiration and hope and a force to be reckoned with. As Maya Angelou beautifully said, and as we, the honorees, can say, quote, I am a woman, phenomenally, phenomenal woman, that's me. End of quote. Maraming maraming salamat po sa inyo. Thank you for listening. Thank you so much. Good afternoon.